Hello, hello. How are you guys doing on today? I hope that you guys had an excellent day at work for those of you who are at the job. <laughs> I pray that you had an excellent day. I'm trying to share quickly. Um, Today, we're doing the town cry, and I had to move the time down to later time, but let's go ahead and pray, Lord. I thank you now for this moment and this time lord i ask you right now to speak and let your servants hear you god in the name of jesus that every distraction everything that will distort understanding and learning will be dismantled now in the name of jesus we pray and we thank you that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight oh lord my strength and my redeemer in jesus name amen and today on Town Cryer, we're continuing on in our Evolve, uh, the whole uh, foundational scripture for Evolve is found in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version. This is the classic Amplified. And it says, therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. And today on Evolve, the series of Evolve, we're going to talk about shatter the glass ceilings with an S. Because a lot of times, many times, we think we reach one plateau and then there's something else blocking us. So we want to shatter glass ceilings with the nest. And to evolve, I'm going to go over that um, like I did in the first and second series episode. Uh, to evolve is to undergo change, to develop, to progress, to advance gradually. Meaning we don't desire to be in the same state that we were in before we came to Christ. Uh, and I use this example before. If you were in slavery, meaning you were in bondage, we, we won't stay in the vicinity of the plantation. We won't become sharecroppers to share that which God has implanted within us with the enemy because that's still keeping us in bondage. We're going to we're going to go out. We're going to spread out. We're going to do. We're going to do and go where God is commissioning us to go, not being in bondage or entangled with that thing that kept us engrafted once before. And um, the thing that that it says shatter, shatter. And, and I said this Saturday um, when I gave the preview to shatter, it's a break. We want him to break. There are things that that uh, we say, you know, if, if I, you know, don't think about it, then it'll go away. But but let the mind that is in us also be as the mind of Christ Jesus. And he has to have some rectifying in our mind, in our thought pattern in order for us to not go where we would normally go, to not think on or ponder on what we in times past would once think about. We have to shatter. We ask, we're we asking God to shatter that, that whole foreplay. We want him, him to break the, the shatter, shatter, completely destroy, annihilate, to break or to cause to break. Suddenly, suddenly, like with, without a warning, it just comes. Our deliverance just comes all of a sudden. That which we have been praying for violently into pieces. It says violently into pieces. And it made me, uh, it took me to the scripture, uh, the kingdom of heaven suffered violent, but the violent take it by force. We, we're we not going to just sit and mope and say, you know, I, I wish I can... Uh, just just get out of this place. I wish I can get out of the, the same cycle that I've been in. I wish I can come out of this this dunk hole. No. Break you you can. You don't have to wish. You don't have to wish. He came to 
to set the captives free. If you are entangled and uh, in bondage of something, we have freedom. We can have freedom. We have been emancipated. We are no longer slaves. And 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 the slave mentality of us being a slave is in our mind. So we have to trans. We have to transform in our mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind. Our minds have to be transformed in order for us to evolve and to go into the new suddenly. To, to go to shatter those glass ceilings, those things that prevent us from doing. If he wants to, uh, to do exceeding abundantly above all we ever ask to think. But because we're still in a slave-like mentality, because we did not evolve from faith to faith and glory to glory, because we're still in the, in that small space in our minds, we, we don't think that we can attain that freedom. In our minds, we don't think we can attain that liberty. In, the, in our minds, we don't think we can attain that, that freedom. And it says, uh, the phrase... To shatter, how you doing? I, <laughs> to to the uh, the phrase shatter glass ceilings is to break and destroy, to annihilate the unseen, the unseen that which resides in our minds, in our hearts. We want God, Lord. I can't do it on my own. I I may not identify something that I continuously do that will keep me in bondage that will keep me in the cycle of a bondage of bondage that will keep me a slave to that thing you know whatever i'm obeying whatever i'm following i'm no longer following christ if if he says that i'm the light of the world but i'm doing things that are of that resembles darkness who is my father who is my father so he wants to break and destroy annihilate the unseen, that that work of darkness that we do not um, identify with, we say we don't identify with, and um, I love this uh, one scripture. I'm gonna take y'all to Second Kings seven th and three, and um, I'll tell you when I stop. But I'm gonna read this from the Amplified Version, and it says, "Listen." There is hope. There's hope, okay? There's hope, but it's, it starts in your thinking. So as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Okay, it says, For now, four men who were lepers were in the entrance of the city's gate. And they said one to another, Why do we sit here until we die? Listen. It's like they had a thought, you know, they were having a conversation. It didn't even make sense. Why are we sitting here until we die? Why sit we here at the gate and, and we're dying? Why? If in your mind, like the, I always say, let a man examine himself. If you are examining yourself, and you, you know if you're living your blessed life, your best life, you know if you, there are areas in your life that have been docile, like there's been no growth, there's been nothing going on. You know within yourself, and they had that conversation, why, why sit we here and die? Verse 4 says, if we say we will enter the city, then the family is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. So either way, we're going to die. But going into the city required movement. It required for them to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. They, we, we cannot stay the, the same and want change. We cannot stay the same and in the same position and want Christ to do something for us. And want uh, the the manifestation to show up. If we didn't. If there is no transaction. If we didn't move. We have to move. When they got. Think about going back to slavery. Down here in the south. Because I'm in Texas and Houston. But slaves were free. For two years. Then they got notification. Oh we're free. But if 
the sharecroppers that I talked about that they were that, that still showed fear. You are free. You have the written record to, to say that you are free. But in your mind, because you have not be, been refreshed, because you have not been renewed, I'm going to stay on the property. I'm going to share the crops that I have. I'm going to stay here. We don't want to stay. We want to move. We, The enemy wants to make us have so much fear that we do not move. He wants us to have so much fear that we do not transform ourselves, that we do not get out of the environment that is all around us, captivity, that is all around us, keeping us in bondage. Um, verse 4, I, I read verse 4, and I'm, I, I'll finish reading it. It said, so now let us go. What is that? Movement. Let us go over to the army of the Syrians. If they spare us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall die. So they arose. But what did they do again? That's movement. They they went to the city. <laughs> they arose. They had, we have to get up. We have to get up on the good foot. We have to get up in order to to have uh, evolution to take place. In order to go uh, and transition. I've never seen a uh, transformation take place and, and you're looking the same. You know, they do the before and after. There's something that takes place. What happens before there is an after? Is there ever an after? Are you always before? Um, it says in verse 4, For the Lord had made the Syrian listen. Listen, we put our trust, we put our hope, we put our confidence in the Lord. It says, for the Lord had made the Syrian army hear a great noise of chariots and horses and a noise of a great army. They had said one to another, the king of Israel has hired the Haiti and the Egyptians king, the Hittite and the, the Egyptians kings to come upon us. So the Syrians arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and left their horses and left their donkeys. Even they left their camp as it was and fled for their lives. So the Syrians, which were we we're going to say our enemies what what is what is your enemy your spiritual enemy god has power over that he has given us power over all power of darkness and nothing by any means shall harm us that's the mentality that we have to take if we're going to evolve we cannot be afraid to go into uncharted territory to something that is oh i, I don't know if i can do that something that we've been talking about but we have not expressed. We have not put our hands up. You know, we put our hands to a plow, but look back, we're not fit. That's the same thing. Putting our hand to the plow, but in our mind, we're looking back. Oh, what What if this happens? What if that happens? No. He said, the, the earth is the Lord, and the, the word, the earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell within. So every thing, we are the ones here in the earth, and we have the authority because we have the Heavenly Father with us. When we speak a thing, it's going to manifest. But we can't be in in Satan's territory, the sharing sharing of our crop, and believe that he's not going to be <laughs> he's not going to be a good king and say, "Oh, you can keep everything that you get." No, no, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So what what makes us believe that he's going to be fair? No, there's no fairness in bondage. No. Um, there was something that um I wanted to say earlier when it talked about uh shattering to change to undergo changes evolve. I'm sorry, to undergo change. Once change has taken place, and there is no residuals, residuals, there's no residue. There's no residue of the old you. You know the scripture. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All the old things are passed away. 
Behold, all things must become new. So it has to become new. The things that are in you has to become new. The things that have not manifested will not manifest if we are still lagging behind. If we are running in terror and uh, fear. And it says, uh, the old you. If the old you was a fearful you, you cannot evolve. That's something... That, okay, Lord, you did not give me the spirit of fear, but that of love, power, and of a sound mind. Lord, this fear that I am battling with, that, that is something that you take to your secret place. We take, we take it, take, they say take it to the king. The song says take me to the king. When you go to the king, you have to have something for to offer you. You, you have to have something to offer him, but you're going to have something that you want the king to do because you know only the king can do it. Who is like unto our God? There is no one. And it says we cannot be fearful or analytic. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, analytic. It's like you are thinking about how it can be erroneous. Are you thinking about how you can mess up are you thinking about how it's not gonna go as planned out and sometimes you're cast down every imagination and and work that will exalt itself we have to cast down those imaginations those vain imaginations we have to cast them down that's being analytical and we're ca canceling out the, the works of faith we're canceling out what god wants to do with his in his glory we canceling out what God promised to us, the promises of the Lord again, amen. But we're being so analytical, we cancel it out. We cancel it out. It said we cannot be analytical, which will hinder us from achieving and from receiving what God has stored up for us. Um, uh, if we have a poverty mentality, we will, we cannot evolve. We cannot evolve. Listen. We cannot evolve if he wants to, us to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. And we ourselves want to go from faith to faith and glory to glory. But we still have a poverty mindset. We are still restricted in our thoughts. If we have, if we have a poverty mindset, that translates to our spiritual concept as well. If we have low thinking so then our faith is low our hope is low our confidence is low if he's going to do exceeding abundantly we cannot even attain that we cannot we we can't receive it we cannot receive it so there had to be a transformation to shatter that that's a glass ceiling the the poverty mindset is a glass ceiling. The fear is a glass ceiling. The analytical thinking is a glass ceiling that needs to be shattered in order for us to go out. He doesn't want us to be contained. He doesn't want to be us to be in a box. Okay? He he he's he's omnipresent. He he's everywhere. So he he's not just in a box, okay? So, um, and, and think about, uh, weights, weights, uh, oh, it's, it's like you, we can trip ourselves up before we even lunch out into the deep. We won't lunch out into the deep. We will stay on shallow water, shallow water, in shallow water, if we don't transform our mind and evolve, knowing that God is going to take me, me deeper, but he's going to allow me to survive. He's not going to allow me to be eaten and devoured he's gonna he's gonna allow me to walk on the water it's peter he's not gonna let me sink he's not gonna let us sink and fail okay um another thing that i wanted to share with you guys comes from uh first john four and four and this is the passion translation it says little children you can be certain this is promise you can be certain that you belong to God and have conquered them. Them. Who is them? The enemy. Who is them? That poverty mentality mentality that I spoke on. Who is them? The analytical thinking that I spoke on. Whatever they are, those uh, spirits or powers that war against your mind constantly, he has given us the power and ability 
to conquer them. For the one who is living, he is not dead. God's not dead. He's yet alive. The one that is living in you is greater than he who is in the world. He is greater. He is stronger. He is wiser. He gives us might. He gives us power. He gives us strength. We have access. We have access. Greater. This is like one of my, I love this scripture, especially in prayer. You know, when the enemy tries to bombard you, greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. So I'm not concerned about, and I tell you as well, don't be concerned about what's not going on, what is going on around you, what, what so-and-so has and how so-and-so is, is, you know, achieving their goals. My God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you ever ask, think, or imagine. So he knows. He knows. He knows. Especially you believer, man of God, woman of God. You you didn't you didn't have a thought. You didn't have that thought of, of starting your own business, of of designing that that outfit. Of, of opening up the doors to to do some type of great work you didn't you're not you didn't have that idea that I didn't come just because you're so great no he planted that there so if he if he put it there he's gonna pay for it he's gonna per if he purposed it in your heart he's gonna commission it to go forth he's gonna give you the resources for it to go forth what are the glass ceilings? that prevent you from evolving that is something that you have to ask yourself let a man first examine himself and see if he be in the faith let a man examine himself let a man examine himself because many times our ears may go off if we're in a, a setting with a group of people and that person that's speaking can be right on target and can be saying something identical to, to what we are going through. But we will hear them in that moment and then a split second, it'll be taken away. But as you go into the presence of the Lord, as you go in the secret place, in the garden, he's going to tell you what's been Preventing you from evolving. What's been for preventing you from break, from shattering those glass ceilings. The mind, know that the mind and the heart is knitted together. Which means that we are emotionally and mentally involved. Tied together. We, we don't want those things. We don't want our emotions to lead us. No. Emotions, guess what? Fear is going to pull in our emotions. And if fear is, is leading and pulling in our emotions, we're not going to evolve. We're not going to move. We're, we're going to stay right where we are. We may make the, the scenery look good. We, we may, you know, dress up differently. We may change our speech. But in our minds, in our spirits, in our hearts, we did not, we have not been transformed. He says, be ye transformed by the renewing of his mind. That you may prove what is that good and what is that acceptable and perfect will of the Father. Uh, this is uh, one of my closing scriptures that I wanted to use. And it's coming from Proverbs 23 and 7. So as a man thinks in his heart. Because the heart and the mind are woven together. Are going to be functioning together. So is he. So as a man thinks in his heart and his mind, so is he. But what is God saying? Is your heart telling you, oh no, you can't go there? And is your mind saying, oh, you don't make enough money? But are they, your heart and your mind, lining up with the word of God? We have to direct everything to the word of God. Line upon line, precept upon precept. There is no error in the word of God. There can be error in our heart. There can be error in our minds. But the word of God is not going to be erroneous at all. So we have that is our plumb line. The word of God. Um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and pray. 
Lord, I just thank you for every uh, person that will view this again. Lord, I just ask you to intervene on their behalf that they will evolve and transform to the men and the women that you have designed them to be as you have purposed them to be great and mighty women and men of God that you allow them to do exceeding abundantly above what they even think God the thing that is keeping them in captivities in their in captivity in their mind and in their heart let it be dismantled let it be dismantled even now that the works of darkness will not have any power over what you call them to be. That your children will rise, that your children will rise at this very hour. No longer being a slave to fear, no longer being a slave to poverty, no longer being a slave to their minds, but being, but being free in you for whom the Son makes free. Is free indeed, and let your children be free indeed as we pray, touching and agreeing. And as we are touching and agreeing on any one thing, you will be in the midst. And we ask you to be in the midst of our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I just wanted to announce to you guys in March of, uh, which is, was that, next month, we have about... Yeah, about two weeks. But on March the 4th, yeah, March the 4th, uh, we're, I'm going to start a uh, book reflection on Facebook. It's, it's like a, a, not a book review, but a book club. It will be almost as a book club because I noticed that authors especially those that hear from God are putting stuff in books, putting revelation, revelatory knowledge in books, and we're just not picking it up. So we want to be able to get the nuggets. We want to be able to get the hidden treasures that the authors have left behind and we're going to be able to pick it up and it's going to access us. It's going to activate us that we'll go to the places, to the dimensions that Christ wants us to go into. Our very first book that we will be doing is, um, I don't know if you can see that, but is the Esther Anointing by Michelle McLean Walters. Again, this is the Esther Anointing. And um, you can look up, there is a group that, that is on Facebook already um, that I designed. Um, and if you would like to be a part of that group, you can go to Book Reflections. Hold on, let me find it for you guys. Because we want to, uh, we want to have people that are iron sharpens iron. I believe in that. Iron sharpens iron. Uh, let me go to it. Yeah, it's called Book Reflections with Virtue Speaks. And so, um, let me see, can I, when you, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be on Sundays and, hold on, let me see, can I, let me see. Yeah, so it's called Book Reflections with Virtue Speaks. And um, if you guys get a chance, um, go ahead and join. And I'm just holding this in my hand. But yeah, go ahead and join. And we're going to start that uh, the very first Sunday in March. is going to be Sundays and Tuesday night, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, this is a very first book, The Esther Noising, that we'll be going over. I have a list already up on the page, um, a list of books that we'll be going through. Um, this is only one of the Esther Anointing, all of her books. The, um, the Deborah Anointing. And the Anna's anointing. Hold on, I, I want to go down and read something. 
we're going to be doing the Destroying the Spirit of Rejection by Apostle John Eckhart. Um, yeah, so if you guys, again, would like to join that body of, you know, believers where the iron is sharpening iron. That's what we want to do, sharpen iron. Um, you can join that book group. And um, I'm going to go ahead and release you guys now. And you guys have a blessed uh, afternoon, evening. And um, I'll talk to you out tonight. We're doing our um, Kingdom Mindset. And Evangelist Dion, you can follow her at Walk It Out D. She'll be on at 7 o'clock. Central Standard Time, unless she gets on and say, hey, I'll be late. And then myself, Virtue Speaks, I will be on on Thursday. But I'm moving the time up till noon. Normally, it's at 7, but I'm going to have to move the time up till noon. So uh, just be, be mindful of the time switch and hope to see you then. You guys have a blessed day.